This Ag News update brought to you by American Implement, dedicated to the past, committed to the future. Kansas farmer Ken McCauley in a moment. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. And joining us now is Kansas farmer Ken McCauley, and the, uh, Ken's been involved in leadership, leadership positions uh, not only throughout the state, but also nationally. And we caught up with him, and the farm broadcasters met in Kansas City, and uh, uh, so Ken, we always like to kind of pick his brain and, and what's going on. So first thing, let's talk about harvest, how things were this fall. We know there's a lot of challenge some places, but what about in your operation? Well, typical, we, uh, we had a really good harvest. We missed, missed a lot of the problems everybody else had, and you know, it, that's just really fortunate, not, not anything that I had to do with it, but we're really happy for that. Corn turned out really good. We got the corn in on time, and it was a pretty normal harvest, but the yields were exceptional. They were really, really good yields, corn and soybeans. Well, it was good as long as you're able to get them out. Now, your neighbors, just a little bit to the, uh, to the east along the Missouri River, have had quite a challenge. Yeah, and we've got some river bottom ground close to us. We don't have any crops there, but uh, that, that bottom ground is still wet, and the river's still high. But uh, I think they're going to get back in and, and get that ground leveled up and so that water can drain. But I'm afraid that next spring it's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of worry about is this going to happen again. We're going to talk to you from a member of the Corn Grower Association to make sure that you're not speaking for any, any, anything else. But I do want to talk a little bit about the, the RFS, the ethanol situation. Uh, you've been involved in that really since the beginning. And... Uh, uh, tell us about the level of either frustration or or excitement uh, of where we are with this. It seems like as a farmer, one day you're happy with the present, the next day you go, well, you know, let's 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 move forward. Well, we need to move forward, all right. And uh, you know, the the president's in charge, and the president's message isn't getting down there. Or president's playing both sides, and I, I think the president's playing both sides of this. We have to be upset about it. I've got a lot of faith that it's going to work out. But the EPA is doing its traditional thing of they're just doing their own thing. And that oil company, they we're fighting two really big dogs here. And you got oil companies, you know, finally figuring out a way to slow us down or even try to break us. And we're not going to let that happen. It's, it's really tragic that, that we can't just obey the law and let the 15 billion gallon work with the protections we've got in place. Well, that, and that's probably one of the things that most farmers uh, don't understand. If the agreement was made or the law was actually in place, why it can't either be enforced or just simply follow without, uh, there, there's, st there's still places for both sides to get victories, isn't there, Ken? There is, and, and you talk about the refinery issue. Uh, we all know how the numbers work. And you can make one refinery look bad and, and make that waiver come into place. But those gallons need to be reallocated back into the system. If that were happening, you wouldn't have this happen because that's, that's the way we designed the law. That, that if you were short, if you were harmed, those things come into play. But those gallons still work into the $15 billion. They're ignoring that, and that's not the right way to do it. We've had a judge declare the 500 million gallons, and they haven't even messed with it. So they're, they're just uh, playing. They're not nice on this. Ken McCauley, a farmer from White Cloud, is joining us. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more in just a moment. 
When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. And that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rural way of doing business. So when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future. Ken McCauley, a farmer from White Cloud, is uh, joining us. Ken's a longtime advocate uh, in the world of agriculture and has been farming uh, for basically, I think, your entire life. My whole life. <laughs> Well, recently, and folks maybe have seen you and your son on the cover of Farm Journal, and, uh, you know, I'm one of those in the media. We'll support anybody that's telling the good story. But I, uh, this segment, we do want to talk to you a little bit about uh, kind of uh, moving to the next generation. And, and uh, it seems like in agriculture we have a, we have a kind of a, an issue of, of, you know, we talk about we want to make sure the farm stays in the next generation. But while you're still active, your son... Uh, and his family wants to uh, get involved and you probably had a lot of difficult conversations but in the end probably going to work out well so to talk about kind of how you got to the point of having those conversations and where things are developing. Well, I've always wanted to make sure that we give our kids any young person the opportunities that I've had and you've had uh, over the years and we started this about 15 years ago when I was president of National Corn Growers that I thought, you know, I need to have something in place if, if I have a wreck or something, if I don't come home someday, what's going to happen? So it's been a long, long-term project, but um, we've, we've created some things uh, that, that matter. It's, it's been a challenge for me. I've enjoyed it, uh, but it's also been kind of a pain to have to do it all. But you know, I feel confident that the right things can happen today. We covered a lot in this in this article about things we've done and personal things, but you know, two of the things that I wanted to make sure of, and we've been really lucky, is just my wife and I. We don't have brothers, cousins, uncles, and all that stuff. That changes it totally different than our deal. But our deal is you need to have in place to where the farm stays intact. That was our big goal. We didn't work on taxes so much. Taxes will be there. We can figure it out. They're a piece of it, but it's a very small piece. Keeping the farm intact so that our son can farm it and not worry about, you know, a piece of it going here and there. So we put a buy-sell agreement in there also. And the buy-sell agreement is a key to anybody's deal. So you don't have to be held hostage by somebody. And that splits up your brother-sister relationship. It's been a huge part of, of uh, everything we've tried to do. It, talk about just the emotions of, of doing things like this and uh, on one hand we all come into this that it's all going to work out fine but the challenges right now going on in production agriculture uh, folks maybe you could give a second look not only on the buyer or the seller or in that transition so uh, maybe you know did you have sleepless nights or were you always confident that uh, you were all heading in the right direction? No, I always had confidence that we were in the right direction. I, the, the big thing that, that we didn't have is when we went into it 15 years ago, we didn't know what we wanted. And I'd stress to anybody, know some, uh, do your homework before you start down the path, at least to know some of the things because you can waste a lot of time and money getting to the point where you need to be because uh, these guys don't work for free. They're willing to help you get to the right place and not be, you know, don't drag the feet, but you want to know what, at least your goals in the thing, and it's really important on that. But no, I didn't have any sleepless nights. I, I like the challenge. Good. Well, Ken, we appreciate appreciate your service uh, to uh, to the agriculture industry, and we look forward to kind of watching how all this develops. So thanks for your time. Well, thank you, Ken. Enjoyed it. Ken McCauley, Kansas farmer, has uh, joined us. He's from the White Cloud area. So stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Day and night. 
Till the job is done, Teeter is the one that works for you. Fields of green, reaching toward the sun, Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter is the one, Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter Irrigation, your source for water management. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas, is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all new, all aluminum Mauer Grain Trailer with all of the electric options, the easy to load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the West location, you'll find bumper poles, goosenecks, and oil field specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the end. Well, that's an Ag News update. Listen for market updates and agriculture news important to you on 1030 KBUF. Also be social with us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching.